This is Huba, a gardener at Green Aqua. Our team has always dreamt about building a terrarium with all the beautiful carnivorous plants. And today we finally found a solid foundation for our project. As you guys can see, this is the Biorb Air 30. First things first, the assembly is in order. Huba puts the pre-cut geotextile fabric uh, at the base of the plate. This uh, will help him distribute the moisture in the soil and it also drains any leftover water from the bottom. The next step he will start adding the soil. The base layer in this case will be a porous volcanic material. It's called pumice stone. The pumice stone will help with the uh, oxygenation inside the soil and that's also really important for the carnivorous plants that uh, he's going to use. This whole thing needs to be distributed evenly at the bottom. The substrate of choice for this project is peat moss and sphagnum moss, it's a mix. It's roughly a 50-50 mix, but uh, you need to be really careful to choose a high quality peat moss for this uh, mixture. This percentage of mixture will really help with the aeration of the soil. He selected some uh, smaller ironwood pieces that would fit through the top opening of the Biorb Air 30. He's just pushing these uh, ironwood pieces into the soil. The black peat that he will use later will stabilize this whole structure. The general scaping rules are applicable here as well. We prefer to use an odd number and take care to have different heights uh, with the different uh, wood pieces. And the hardscape is done. The next step is the so-called black peat that goes on top. It will help you to moist it a little bit, uh, it will be easier to work with like that. He started placing the small pieces uh, next to each other and then he will work them together and uh, they will form a uniform layer on the top of the peat moss. Be careful to leave some space between the uh, wood pieces uh, so that they will have a direct connection to the peat moss. That will come handy when uh, the water needs to reach the plants. The black peat will also fix the hardscape and it's gonna be sturdy. If you want to keep your uh, carnivorous plants happy, make sure that you place the uh, wood pieces uh, a little bit apart so that air can flow through easily. Next step is molding the top layer together. The first plant we introduce will be familiar to many in the aquascaping hobby. It is called Utricularia graminifolia. The Utricularia belongs to the bladder wort species and it's surprisingly a carnivorous plant. He's planting the Utricularia patch by patch. Uh, it's a perfect carpeting plant. You don't need to uh, plant this uh, very deeply. The roots will nicely fill up the space and they will grow much faster if you just kind of push it a little bit in. 
Not much. You can also just place them on top of the soil, move them, jiggle them a little bit and then they will stick to the black peat easily. No real terrarium build is complete without mosses. Here's Huba's favorite Plagiomnium moss species. It has beautiful, delicate round leaves and it also grows just perfectly under terrarium conditions. He's placing the big patches here and there and uh, mixing them with some uh, UG carpet. He's planting the asparagus fern in this case. It really adds to the detail with its small and delicate leaves. It looks great. This also requires uh, some airflow, just like the other carnivorous plants. So for this build, it's a perfect addition. If you plant this inside the peat moss layer, the roots will be able to grow much faster. They look like mini trees, don't they? Now, the real stars of the show, the carnivorous plants. He's first planting the smaller droseras at the front. They're commonly known as sandews. They originate from damp swamps. That's why he plants them at the lowest points of the terrarium where the moisture content of the soil is the highest. That's because they uh, appreciate a little more humidity than the rest of the carnivorous plants. Then he starts adding other droseras to add some variety to the landscape. Next comes the Saracenia, also known as the North American Pitcher. They are seated a little bit higher because they don't require that much uh, moisture. Also, they require a little bit more light. And lastly, he adds the crown jewel of this scape. It's an Apentis from Borneo. This is the plant that the people usually associate the carnivorous plants with. They are epiphytes, so he just wraps some sphagnum moss around the roots. That's it. Let's uh, use some sphagnum moss at the top. And then finally, there's only one thing to be done to assemble the top of the bio air. This neat little product has active air circulation, lights, built-in humidifier, and it really, really has everything that uh, you need for a good terrarium. Thank you guys for joining us and please enjoy the final results. Bye-bye.